Hello, my name is Terry Garrett. I attend the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. I'm in the fifth year of my mechanical engineering degree with a minor in aerospace engineering. I'm currently 23 years old. I was born in Fort Lupton, Colorado and currently live in Colorado Springs, Colorado. When I'm not playing games, I usually try to make it to karate two to three times a week. I do Universal Kempo Karate, and I'm currently an Advanced 2 Brown Belt. Um, I'll be testing for my Student Black Belt in about a year and a half. The types of video games I enjoy aren't the I shoot you before you shoot me kind of games. I just have no need to play those. Um, I like the games where there's an actual storyline behind it, and some advanced puzzles within it to actually solve, so you need some actual intelligence to play. Um, games that fall into this category besides Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus would be, for instance, Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Metal Gear Solid, and the Mario series. Um, all, I can't play all those games because some of them don't have the advanced sound design that um, Abe's Exodus or Abe's Odyssey has, but um, I'm always searching for games that have that storyline aspect to them. I first found out about Abe's Odyssey back when my brother got it for the computer, and when I first heard Abe saying hello and follow me, I instantly got interested. A game with a lot of sound is what I really liked, because I had just lost my sight at this point, and sound was the thing that I cling to. So my brother let me try, he wasn't really excited about it, but and I didn't have the advanced hearing that I do now for gameplay. So I could just hear Abe's foot, uh, footsteps, but I had no idea what was going on. There was like a no man's land, there was no landmarks, even though I know there were there at that point. I just couldn't use them. And um, it wasn't until later that my brother got Abe's Exodus for the PlayStation, and I had a few years to actually get, my, get around to using my hearing more. And I was able to sit down and actually try to figure out what was going on. I had a better idea what the 2D environment was. So I was able to figure out not only steps, but up and down ledges, doors, levers, bombs, and use those sounds to be able to figure out what was actually going on in the game. I first started having eye problems around three months old. I started surgeries then. And throughout the first 10 years of my life, I had several eye problems. The doctors could not explain why they happened, but they required eye surgery to keep a little bit of my sight. And finally, my eyes had enough. And by the age of five, I lost the, all sight in my left eye. And by 10, I lost all the sight in my right eye due to the, due to the buildup of scar tissue. Um, I did go through a few years of self um, pity about why did I have to be blind, why did I have to go through this, but uh, thanks to family and great friends I was able to turn my disability into something that limited me into something that I can use for my benefit, and now I'm proud to say that I'm a blind person, I do not, I don't have any desire to have my sight back because it would be hard to actually learn how to do everything over again. And one great bonus about being blind is I have to have no eye doctor visits or no more surgeries. So that's always a great, great benefit. When I come across a new video game, the first thing to do is have a sighted person tell me what the menus are so I can make selections, create games, erase games, that sort of thing. And then the next part is to find either a text walkthrough or a video walkthrough on YouTube so I can get an idea of what the gameplay is like. Is it 2D? Is it 3D? What environment am I going to be in so I have a better idea of what to listen for? And then the gameplay starts and I'll listen for l sound landmarks including footsteps, am I pushing against the wall, um, and how's the character interact with how, how much sound does the main character make, how much sound do enemies and other people make. And then there are sound landmarks which are ones I use for orientation, such as sound of water, um, sound of footsteps changing from grass to dirt, that sort of thing. 
and sometimes I'll get to puzzles, especially in 3D where it's just going to be basically impossible to pass it because the sound does not allow me to. I did not need a walkthrough for Abe, um, but it's because of its 2D environment and advanced sound. Design. Um, one other element that I really love is the save state feature from Abe's Exodus. Uh, I also use uh, an emulator for Legend of Zelda, which I do own the original copy, but it has a save state built into the emulator that acts exactly like Abe's Exodus, and this allows me to play other games because I'm able to practice a section and memorize it instead of having to do a whole entire section if I die. And that was one great aspect to help me pass Legend of Zelda, Abe's Exodus, and other games that have that feature built into them. The method I used for passing Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus was the one mentioned in the last question, but um, because of Abe's advanced audio design, I was able to do this game with no walkthrough. There first was Abe's steps, he makes a sound when he steps, when he runs, when he hops, when he pushes against the wall, when he grabs a ledge, he makes a sound for anything that he does. And then there were the landmark sounds around him. There were sounds for the sligs, the mines, the chant orbs, um, a madokin to save, the blinking bombs, all of those made noise. So I knew what was in the screen, or there were even sounds of sligs um, before you went into a screen so you didn't just run in there like an idiot and get killed. Um, for places where I had to try to find a lever or a door or a ledge to pull up, I do that step by step and then press control or up uh, to try to find it. And when I did, I wouldn't memorize that many of steps because there's a certain amount of steps per screen, either running or walking. And for screens where there was a lot of stuff like sligs or mines to kill you, that's where the save state came in so I could focus on one screen at a time and as soon as I memorized that screen I could move on. Now there were certain sounds of the game that made it totally um, possible for me to pass the game. There were chant orbs so I knew when not to chant. The blinking bombs were designed to be done by sound I think anyway because if you try to look for the green light by the time you see it's green it's too late. Just listen for the pattern you can do it. Um, all the all the creatures made noise, all the slicks made noise, and the most surprising, and I'm glad you guys did this, was even the motion detector, motion detection of lasers, when they touched you, it made a noise. And I know there's the games that wouldn't even think of that, but that's great that it was developed to not only make a better audio environment for a sighted person, but to make it enable a blind person to pass the game.